Today we do a second take on the basic Zephyr Blink example on the Nordic NRF 53DK board and uh, we will modify it to blink all the LEDs and we will have a look how the device tree works and uh, how to change a pin or add a new LED or button. So let's take a look how it goes. Okay, so we got the VS Code running here and uh, let's open up the Blink application. So you would probably click on the Pro Samples and type in Blinky. Okay. And you will get the application here. So we need to add a build configuration. Uh, I use the non-secure application for the board. Uh, so it's a little bit less annoying. Uh, you can use a different uh, overlay for the device tree. Mm. But we will use the default one. Okay, so we got this done. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the main file right here. Uh, so by default we got uh, LED 0. So to take a quick look what it is, we can view the device tree. Uh, so uh, by the graphical interface we can see that it is the P028 so the LD0 uh, let's take a look how this compiles and works on DA board so let's return let's build it and let's flash it so as intended, the LED 1 or LED 0 in the code is flashing. Okay, so now let's add all of the LEDs. Okay, so uh, this will be quite simple because uh, we need to uh, bind the alias for the instance. So we will use those functions. Uh, and to, to take a look what we got here. So this is the default for the board. The uh, DTSI file and uh, we can see we got uh, those LEDs right here so let's quickly add them up so LED1, LED3 and the same here okay and uh, the next structure to access the GPIO and again we can add here LED 0, 1, 2, 3 and right here the alias for the LED and uh, Right here we can copy this or maybe even let's just add this as a one statement let's give a end And, and, okay. And right here, zero, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, we also need to configure this. Uh, this is not really needed in our case. Again, zero, one, two, and three. Okay, and uh, now to the steering the LEDs. Again, this is not really needed in our case. Uh, 
and again. So uh, we would like to turn them on in a circle, so it will be something like this. Okay, so now let's build it, see if we got any trouble here, no trouble at all, so let's flash it. Okay, so now the LEDs behave like this, so they go on and off in a circle pattern. Okay, so now what about adding a fifth LED, so for example something like this. And uh, we will use the header right here. So we will use the P027. So let's plug in the LED right here. Okay. And uh, now let's add this in the program. Okay, so uh, let's add a fifth LED. And to do so, we can check in in the graphical interface here and add it by clicking this. So this is the proposal here, so OK. And you can add here the pin for the LED. OK, so we got this here, the LED4. Uh, and uh, let's add it up here. Mm, there will be a little bit of a trick because you will see in a moment that it won't be recognized. So LD4. Again here. And maybe at the end. The LED4. Okay, so uh, now if we would like to try and uh, oh, and also don't forget to add the checkup here for the fourth one. Okay, so now if we would try to build it, um, we get a undefined reference to the LD4, which we will see in a moment. Yeah, so uh, now we uh, have a undefined reference to the LD4. And now, uh, what to do with this? We have to add uh, the LED4. And uh, to add it, we can go to the to this file. So we can open up uh, the file, the DTS, the right here one. And if we check, we don't have a alias. So we can add the one ourselves so it will be after the LED so aliases and let's quickly check how it's supposed to look like the original file so we can copy this and add it right here, so the LED4. Okay. And now let's quickly build it. Oh, there's a bit of a problem because we also have to change it right here. Let's try again. Okay, so we got this builded. Now let's flash it and see the result. Okay, so now we got the four LEDs lighting up and we got the fifth one also working. And after the turn, it goes off. So this is as expected. 
Okay, but what about uh, using the GPIOs the old-fashioned way? So uh, we will have to add the legacy driver here and to do so we can add uh, all of the layers for the driver and uh, to take a look what the functions are let's go to this file quickly into this file and uh, right here we got the file that we are looking for so right here uh, we got the uh, old functions that are used in the previous SDKs so for example NRF52 and uh, we want to configure a GPIO as a output so let's and here nrf gpio config output and we want to drive for example p1.15 so it will be 32 plus 15 okay and uh, we want to toggle the led so Right here, we can add a another function, nrf underscore gpio pin toggle, and the exact number. Okay, so now let's try and build it. Okay, so it works. So now let's flash it. So this is the setup from before. Now let's remove the old LED and place the new one at the P115. And as you see, it works. So you can use uh, both the Zephyr method and also the legacy one. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.